Vigilante wins in here with a very simple question, and that is what has happened to the Deontay Wilder Anthony Joshua fight after the day of reckoning? I know I'm weeks after the fact, but I still wanted to talk about it, and I'm talking about it now. Before we get too deep into this, please, 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 if you like the video, please like the video. Please, sharing is caring. And if you are willing to sub, we're trying to make it to 250 by the end of the month. We're already close to 215. So I would really appreciate if you can uh, sub to this channel. We talk all sorts of sports, wrestling, and whatever else is on my mind, at least on this channel. Plus, we have another channel where we talk even more stuff than that. So I remember making a video comparing Deontay Wilder to Anthony Joshua as far as where they were. Um, this would be right after Joshua's hilarious fight. Obviously, that was a common opponent for both of those men. And that's one of my more successful videos. It's one of those videos that's evergreen, as they say, in the YouTube world, where people still go to the video to see what my thoughts were on them. One of my concerns for Deontay Wilder, even though the perception was that Deontay Wilder was the most dangerous fighter between the two, was that Deontay was so inactive. And after that loss to Joseph Parker at the Day of Reckoning, it has come to pass. And so now, the perception is totally different. I think most people will pick Anthony Joshua in an easy victory over Deontay Wilder. And it's kind of sad to see. It's not really kind of, it's very sad to see. Now look, I am not a diehard Wildette. I've been very critical of the Wildettes. I've been very critical of the LDBC. They can be very racially motivated at times. And unfortunately, a lot of boxing can be racially motivated the other way. It's a lot of mess when it comes to boxing and racism and all this other good stuff. So I'm not really trying to get too heavy on that. But I'm saying all this to preface that I am a fan of watching Deontay Wilder fight. I did not like how he ducked out of fighting Anthony Joshua in the first place. I gave some blame to at least Eddie Hearn's part of that too. So to me, I will always blame both, mostly Deontay Wilder and his side, but I always had the sneaking suspicion, at least at the time, that Eddie Hearn had a little bit of hesitance about putting Anthony Joshua in there, maybe expecting something like what ended up happening with Ruiz to happen. I think he had a little fear of that that's another can of worms because like roger clemens once said i'm not really here to talk about the past or am i i am here to talk about the disappointment that is deontay wilder's career because he never really took boxing as seriously as he should have neither did his team and his team only looked to exploit him he never got better and Throughout his career, he never fought the opponents that would make him better, that would challenge him. And now late in his career, even this past year, where he could have been doing something similar to what Anthony Joshua was doing, fighting opponents that, yeah, may be below him, but challenging. Guys like Jermaine Franklin, who was a very challenging fighter, like a Dillian White, obviously Dillian White had PED issues, so it ended up being hilarious, who to be fair, is the same guy that Wilder fought, but I think Wilder should have fought maybe a Jermaine Franklin, maybe somebody else. He should have challenged himself and kept him self-active against very competent fighters, and he didn't do that. And now we're looking at a guy whose career is probably over. He should be trying to get a rematch with Joseph Parker, but it doesn't look like he is. He's trying to cash out against Anthony Joshua or something, or whatever the hell he's trying to do. It's very sad. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of the of certain elements of his personality. The guy who was a 19 year old kid who said he's gonna be the world champion to his daughter who had physical difficulties and actually accomplished that. I like that part of Deontay Wilder. The overly cocky, crazy, delusional, the weights of this costume was too much. That's why I lost to Tyson Fury. I'm not the biggest fan of that element of Deontay Wilder, but I did want to see him succeed. He was an exciting fighter. I don't want this to be over. But I, I want Wilder to uh, build himself back up and have the willingness to build himself back up. This is as much a tale of two fan bases as anything. Say what you will about Joshua, but because he is so criticized, because he has been the main character of boxing for the past five, six years, whatever it's been, he always had people, fans, even his diehard saying, 
Well, he has to get better. When he beat Franklin, oh, he doesn't look quite right. When he beat Hellenius, oh, he doesn't look quite right. Now he's fighting with Ben Davidson. Say what you will about boxer size Ben. And he looks a lot closer to him at his most dominant. And it's because he had fans who put pressure on him. Meanwhile, Wilder's fans, they saw the knockout with Hellenius. And they acted like he needed no further rehab from those two devastating losses to Fury. And clearly he did. And now it looks like his career is over. And that's sad to see. I, as, as a fan of just the sport of boxing, and I, as someone who thinks boxing is more interesting with Deontay Wilder as a dangerous contender, seeing that, no, this is probably the end because I do not expect him to come up and fight Joseph Parker again, it's sad. It's sad that this guy spent his entire career not challenging himself. His best win is going to be Louis Ortiz, who I, I actually am high or King Kong Ortiz, but still, you know, that's going to be his best win. What's his second best win? Brazil? Stavern? You know what I'm saying? This guy never lived up to his potential. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame that his management was so um, soft, for lack of a better term, and the way that they used him and the way that they booked him and brought him along. They didn't bring him along for him to be the best fighter he could be. They brought him along to make the most money. I get it. It's a business. It's the hurt business. He did make a lot of money. I wish him the best and whatever he does going forward. Uh, but it's sad. He didn't max out his potential. And there's no way. He, he didn't even come close. He didn't come close. And I know he was never going to be the most gifted boxer. Um, he came in late. He started late. But with that right hand and his talents, I know some people might say, well, Deontay Wilder had overrated power. It was all because of this rod, his arm and surgery. Fair enough. But he had one of the most devastating right hands that they sanctioned and allowed in a boxing ring. And they didn't get the most out of it. He was never going to become this, you know, Marcus of Queensberry craftsman in the ring. But he could have been better than what he was. As far as Joshua, who I haven't talked as much about during this video, um, I'm very excited to see what he's going to do. He has a lot of options. Um, there's a rumor that he might fight Naganyu. I would love to see that. He might fight Hergovic. He might fight Zhang. He could fight Tyson Fury or even have a three-peat rematch with Usyk. He has a lot of stuff on his table um, over the next year. And he looks like a fighter that at least has a few more good years in him. And so it's the tale of two fighters. Um, as far as who would have won in the, their prime, if they would have matched up, when they should have matched up, I don't think we'll ever know. I hate to say it, you know what I mean? At various times, I think Deontay Wilder, but you know what? They, they had to bring him along a lot better than what they did. He very easily could have got sparked out by AJ. We see that he can be stopped. We see, especially when he's not as dangerous, not as active, that he's just another guy out there. And that's what we just saw from Joseph Parker, who ironically enough is getting the least amount of credit of anyone with an impressive victory. I mean, no one's talking about Joseph Parker and he did what a lot of people didn't think he could do. Granted, he, would, he also did what a lot of people thought he would do because a lot of people picked him as the upset going into that card but Deontay Wilder very much a waste of talent Anthony Joshua very much looking closer to what he once was and just one more point before we get out of here this video's already been close to 10 minutes at least of recording I'm sure I edited it down some but what do you guys think of old boxer size Ben a lot of people have been very critical of Ben Davidson as a trainer and what his skill level is like but I honestly think even if he is a simplistic trainer, which I'm not the boxing expert that I wish I was to be able to tell you either way on that. I definitely think he's resonating with Anthony Joshua because of said simplicity, because it's not overcomplicated. I think Anthony Joshua has too many people in his ear and sometimes it could be too much. And it's probably best to have a simple voice, do simple training do the simple stuff the basics and i think that's easier for joshua to stick with but what do you guys think about anthony joshua and deontay wilder do you still want this fight there's a part of me that kind of does if wilder's willing to build himself back up but i don't see that happening unfortunately but what say you if you like the video please like the video if you're so obliged to share and subscribe please do that and even if you do none of these things thank you for watching 
Thank you for your time. Good night and God bless. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.